An English author once said, if you want to know what's important to a culture, learn their language. Because language is connected to what we value. And what we value shapes the way we think. And the way we think affects everything. If you want to know what's important to you, learn your language. And I don't mean your national or ethnic language. I mean your personal and individual language. And it starts with one word. Mine was love. What's yours? This technique of exploring a word you value does multiple things. It deepens your understanding of that specific value, and at the same time, it deepens your understanding of your worldview. And the word ends up being a deep and intentional anchor that keeps you acting from a place of purposeful perspective. These value words, such as love, are big words with a general understanding of what they mean. How much more powerful and effective would it be to be guided by these values if we had a better understanding of all their nuances in meaning. And exploration is a process that leads to better understanding of the thing you are exploring and also of yourself. For example, there is an explorative writing approach that teaches writing to think and not thinking to write. And then there's the famous example of traveling on your own and exploring new places to find yourself both these examples deepen our understanding of our own position on things. And the same is true when exploring a value word. I'll use my value word love as an example. Let's say that love is a terrain that I'm trying to understand. And from my exploration of this terrain, I develop a new map that displays my new understanding of love and provides me with a sense of direction. What's interesting here is that there are many different options when it comes to making a map. And the difference between my map and the actual terrain is the lens and filter in which I see the world. What am I choosing to include in my map? What am I leaving out? How have I figured out the boundaries of the area? When is the terrain no longer the terrain of love? What control points am I using as references? What projection? am I using? And what elements am I giving more weight to? All these choices and decisions embedded in this filter stem from my worldview. And once I understand this, I no longer just see through a filter. I see the filter itself. Greater understanding of this filter allows for more intentional and less reactive decision making in the future. You are more aware of what matters to you and what doesn't. And so you're able to act from a place that is more in line with who you are and what you value. A leader is born out of that ability to move forward with purpose and not reactively follow what might present as important. It's no surprise that higher levels of self-awareness has been correlated with higher levels of success in leaders. So to begin, let's first take a look at what we're dealing with here. What's in a word? Words are practical tools of communication and identification. If I want to catalog a complex idea, I'm going to assign a word to that idea so that the next time my brain wants to build on that complex idea, all I have to do is use the word without having to take the time to put together my thoughts to reassemble the idea from scratch each time. This allows for more efficient use of our brain power. And cutting out that reorientation time can be significant in fast-paced environments when decisions need to be made quickly. Words are containers to meaning. The philosopher Al-Ghazali said that there are things named, names, and the act of naming. Here's an example to demonstrate the way I understand this. So if the thing named is a specific individual and I choose to use the name human to name them, then the act of naming only captures their humanity. 
However, if I choose to use the name artist, then the act of naming is more expansive as it not only captures their implied humanity, but also their artistic lifestyle. But what both these names fail to capture or contain about this specific individual is that they are also a mother, a runner, a teacher, etc. The more names I use, the more I'm able to capture or contain the reality of this specific individual. The same is true with intangible things being named, such as the reality of love. There are limitations to naming and there are variations. What one person might mentally capture with one word can be different than what another person captures with the same word. So what you might end up with is two identical containers that are the same word, but with different contents contained. Consider how life experiences, culture, and language affect the interpretation of these words. Does the same word in different languages have the same meaning? Or is the question itself a strange one to ask? Especially when, for example, there are many words related to the reality of love in one language and only a small handful in another language. Are we really comparing apples to apples? Ponder the example of a young couple I know of who both share English as a second language, but they don't share the first language. They would have talks with dictionaries at their disposal about what a word really meant and how they had different understandings. We can understand each other better when we take the time to open up the containers that they give us. And what I want to highlight is that you can understand yourself better when you take the time to open up the containers that you give. We can get so used to dealing with certain containers that we forget the complex ideas they are referencing. So if you want to revisit how your brain has made sense of a word or make sense of a new word, for the first time, and you open up the container and you look inside it, you realize you have to use other words and ideas to define the word without using the word itself. This is similar to how our brain naturally understands and develops metaphors. It's through association, intuition developed by comparison and pattern recognition. Think of how we learn our first language in the first place. To help you conceptually visualize how your brain does this, I'm gonna borrow the concept of the space of words from a TED Talk. What it is, is basically placing words closer to each other if they are more related to each other. Like the words arm and finger would be pretty close to each other, but the words arm and sun won't. The speaker said that walking in the space is like walking in the mind. And what I'm suggesting is thinking of a dynamic space of words. And you can think of your mind as that dynamic space of words when you are exploring your main value word. Your mind will be paying attention to other words and ideas that seem to be related to your main value word. Where at first you might not fully understand how intertwined those other words and ideas might be. But as time goes on and the connection strands thicken and strengthen, your brain pulls together those words as it starts to understand how those other words and ideas interact with each other. And the rearrangement of those other words and ideas essentially portrays what you are realizing your main word to mean. So place the map of your new understanding into your container of your word. And with time, the container will help you reference an intuitive understanding without needing to assemble your complex thought process from scratch each time. This brings us to the beginning of your explorative journey. How do you know which word is the most important word for you to open up first? So what you're trying to do is find a word that represents a specific value of yours. What's your why? Some personality typing narratives, such as the Myers-Briggs 16 personalities or the motivation-based Enneagram can help with this. They can say that this specific personality type has this certain set of values, or you can work backwards. What frustrates you? 
because frustration can be a sign of an untapped value of yours not being fully realized. So you can think of your value as a coin with frustration and motivation as two sides of the same coin. This is where your explorative journey really begins. Similar to product testing, when an employee is tasked with breaking a product to test its reliability, you're going to test your current understanding of your value word by using the limits and capabilities of language to assess the gaps in your understanding. Again, I'll use my word, love, as an example. The word love is used in so many different ways. What is the commonality between all these different contexts and uses? And how can I define the word love in such a way that makes sense in all these different contexts? It's not an easy question, and that's the point. You're supposed to feel a little stuck and a little lost to be pushed to explore. To put it simply, we need to define love in such a way that when used in a familial context, it makes sense, and when used in a romantic context, it makes sense, and so on with all the other contexts. If you are the science type, you can think of it like this. Each of the subsections are functions of the variable love. Their definition is dependent on the definition of love. So like an algorithm, if I tweak what I define my variable to be, all the functions dependent on that variable will automatically change. And that change must not result in an error in any of the subsections for that definition of love to be valid. Give the algorithm time to run and don't be discouraged by the trial and error iterative procedure. Reality is gonna be a tool to help refine your thought process. Your reality and others. Similar to how you think you might have figured things out theoretically, but in a practical lab setting, you realize you might be missing something. People are incredible resources because of the wisdom of lived experience. So talk to all sorts of people about it. Share your thoughts, ask for their thoughts, by talking about it and struggling to verbalize, we sort the mess in our heads. You can't tackle this properly if you don't ask the tough questions within yourself and to others. Read books, articles, watch videos. Notice answers in what you see and in what you hear and in what you feel. And therapy can be a great tool to help uncover blind spots that might be limiting your understanding and perception. Reflect, journal, and take notes. But how do you sort through when people share conflicting definitions and ideas? Remember that people are trying to communicate ideas and bridge the gap between their thoughts and you as a listener. In good written contracts and formal discussions, they make sure that everyone is on the same page when it comes to the terminology that they're gonna choose to use from that point onwards but in other contexts, that doesn't usually happen. And so people just grasp at terms that they think might do a good job in explaining their thoughts. But sometimes things actually get lost when translating their thoughts with words that might actually throw you off. There is more room for misunderstanding when you're talking about something big like love. Some religious terms are examples of how certain words can represent so much that finding the right words to describe them well is really difficult. The term needs to be understood through experiencing the meaning of the word, through learning and wrestling with it themselves to develop an intuitive understanding. For example, the Arabic word ihsan is roughly translated and defined as a combination of goodness, excellence, and beauty. When used in an Islamic context, it is viewed as the pinnacle of faith, described as worshiping God as if you see God. It comprises so much faith-based meaning. There are numerous religious discourses that try to elaborate on what that really means. And many Muslims who aren't Arabic speakers choose to use the term Ihsan and not translate it while they are speaking in English or another language because Translating it won't do the meaning any justice. 
So you can start to see how, as a religious term, there is a lot more depth associated with that word compared to just using it as a regular Arabic word. And so when you are exploring your deep value word and people are sharing their thoughts with you, don't get stuck on the literal and linguistic wording. Try to focus on understanding the essence of what they are trying to say. Searching for an understanding that rings true to you takes time and can be confusing, challenging, and overwhelming. But remember that discomfort can actually be signaling growth as you push the boundaries of your understanding of your value word. And the process of overcoming difficulty with regards to your value word places you in an influential space of being a guide for the rest of us when it comes to better understanding that value. Some of the most powerful of teachers are the ones who understand the struggle. When you do come closer to figuring things out, you'll know. You'll start seeing it resonate. Come to a working definition that works for you and fine tuning it is a lifelong process. Humanity's progress comes from people diving deeper, from people exploring further, from people pushing the frontiers of understanding and challenging the accepted standards. This is no different. A famous American anthropologist once said, culture then began when speech was present. And from then on, the enrichment of either means the further development of the other. It's time to enrich your own personal culture by enriching your understanding of your own personal language. And it starts with one word. Mine was love. What's yours? <laughs>